States of America. Let us talk now uh, to Professor David Abulafia, who's a professor of Mediterranean history at the University of Cambridge. Interesting piece that we read today about how the BBC has now become so kind of woke uh, and subject to its own narrative that it's kind of rewriting history, basically. Uh, professor, a very good afternoon to you. Welcome. Good afternoon. Yeah. Um, is, is that a fair assessment of what they're doing? Well, I, I think a lot of it actually consists of something which is a sort of variant on that, which is leaving out things which which really would explain what was going on in the past yes. much more clearly. So the result of that is to produce a sort of bias in the uh, in the discussion, and particularly in dealing with subjects like uh, the Atlantic slave trade, mm. the terrific, um, slave trade which carried on for several centuries. But, you know, forgetting to mention, say, so forgetting, I mean, ignoring the fact that the British were instrumental in suppressing the transatlantic slave trade, or that the British established in Sierra Leone a special colony for freed slaves. Things like this, you know, if you're doing a program on Sierra Leone, <laughs> then really it's very important that you bring that in. You can't just stop the story um, way back in the 17th, 18th centuries at the time when things were uh, admittedly, yes. you know, going badly for the slaves. But this is kind of unfortunately, it would appear to me anyway, uh, as, as a bit of a hangover from what their news departments have been doing for quite a few years now, which is to kind of look at stories from a particular perspective and to only look at them from a particular perspective and to then kind of almost draw their own conclusion before they get to it, if you like, so that they know where they want to go uh, and they try and sort of fit the agenda around it, which seems to me that's what, the, that's what you're describing. It's exactly what a historian, you know, I mean, a historian should not be doing. Right. I, I always tell my students, you know, you don't make up your mind about the conclusion before you've actually done the work, before you've collected the material. Right. So you've got to have you, you, you've got to have some ideas about where things might go, but at the same time, you mustn't assume you know the answer uh, because probably the deeper you go, you're going to come up with some surprises. And that's part of the fun of doing history, that you actually do come up with these surprises. Mm. But of course the narrative now, in an awful lot of universities, uh, uh, at the very least, and possibly in, in the BBC as well, um, is that history isn't really what it looks like, and that history, as we've been taught it, isn't real, and that history has to be looked at from different perspectives. But surely at some point, as a professor of Mediterranean history, you have to accept that things happened in a particular way, don't you? Yeah, there is a real past. It's quite helpful, actually, to bring on board a type of historian, the archaeologists, because they can actually produce the physical objects. You right. know, there really are things out there. They're the foundations of cities. They're objects made, you know, by their citizens and so on. And... Um, there is, on the other hand, as you say, this idea that there is no real past, that everybody has their own past, yeah. the construction of the past. And it's a bit like this idea which we find, dare I say it, in the Harry and Meghan business, for instance, there's my truth, yeah. and then there's, well, what Tom Stoppard, the great playwright, calls truth, truth. And what we're doing, what historians should be doing, is pursuing truth, truth. Mm. The worry is that the BBC has, you know, it's got this agenda, it's playing to a particular gallery, but that's not actually, I think, where the public necessarily want to be. No. And I mean, is there any truth, uh, as, as, as it were, to use that word, um, to the fact that some history has been recalled somehow wrongly, or has been recorded wrongly, or has been recorded, you know, from a different perspective than it should have been? Oh, yes. I mean, one has to remember that the victors write the history. So, you know, going back to one of the most famous historical figures, Julius Caesar. Mm. Well, he wrote books about the wars in, in Gaul, France, and so on, um, in which, of course, he presented himself in the best light. So what you always have to hope for is that there's another account from the other side, um, and sometimes there isn't. You know, So that's the challenge that historians take, mm. uh, face. Yeah. But in terms of, say, the Second World War, you know, I'm, uh, years ago when we used to have debates on the radio about, you know, who was the uh, who was the worst villain, you know, Churchill for bombing Dresden, um, you know, or Hitler uh, for sending um, Jewish people to gas chambers, and you kind of go, well, that's not really a very good comparison. And what do you, when you're presented with that kind of choice as a as a as a history professor, what would you say to somebody who asked that question? 
I would say that that although we can certainly, you know, any civilized person is going to say that Hitler and Stalin and Mao were um, horrendous figures responsible for millions and millions of deaths, nonetheless, it's not our task as historians to pass judgment on people in the past. That's not what we do. Right. We blame. We 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 show what was happening. And every now and again, you know, when I've written about the slave trade, I will often put in the word horrific or. Mm or unspeakable or something like that. I think one can do that. Uh, or if one were writing about the persecution of the Jews, as you mm. say, one would undoubtedly do that. But but the reader knows that you're expressing your own opinion. Basically, that's not what it's about. It's about recovering the past, trying to see the past actually through the eyes of people who lived in those times, which may mean that you're seeing the past through the eyes of people who actually thought slavery was an acceptable thing, mm. uh, which we find extremely difficult. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, t to us, that's an enormous challenge, of course. It's, it, it, you know, it's a revolt practice yes but it goes on to this day and the people who object to it going on in the past don't seem to have a problem with it going on today you don't hear them complaining about you know the filipino slaves that are being used every day uh, in saudi arabia in fact the sunday times i think did a, an investigation this weekend about the numbers of of, of human um in sort of individuals who are trafficked and sold practically as slaves within um saudi households yeah, we have to acknowledge that slavery is something which has existed right across human history. Um, it's existed not just not just these um, poor black slaves being sent across the Atlantic, but you know in the Indian Ocean, in China, ancient medieval China, right up to you know the end of the imperial period. You had these eunuchs, you know these kids who who had their sexual organs cut off mm. so that they could uh, live as slaves mm. in the um, in in the women's quarters. Uh, I mean, they're horrific things, and as you say, they continue to this day. It's um, one of the great virtues, I think, of modern civilization that we have turned our face against slavery. But as you say, it exists, and it even exists, of course, mm. in London. There are you know there are people trapped there are there are servants who are not allowed to leave the homes of, of uh, you know where they work things like this every now and again these stories emerge in the papers but that's obviously on a minute scale yeah. um, but at least at least we've got that sort of sense of of morality mm. now which makes slavery into something evil Yes. No, I think that's right. It's fascinating stuff. We'll have to get you back on, Professor, I think, but there's so much more we could be talking about. But thank you very much, uh, Professor David Abulafia, Professor of Mediterranean History at the University of Cambridge. That's the second great professor we've had on uh, in the last week from Cambridge. Uh, there is hope for us yet, I think. This is Talk TV.